over here, maybe, on that side. So, welcome everybody to the Martin e. Siegel Theatre Center here at the Graduate Center of CUNY. My name is Frank Henschkan, I'm the Director of Programs and Executive uh, Director. Um, all year long, as you know, we have uh, significant programs, programs that hopefully inspire, programs that support our mission, which is to support and bridge academia and professional theater, international, um, and of course, uh, uh, American theater. But um, what we are experiencing now for the next two days, I think is one of the highlights of our entire year, and perhaps, you know, also looking back over the decades. It's a follow-up to our very first uh, Japan Playwright Project, where the young Toshiki Okada came, I think the first time to the US, maybe one of the first times out of uh, Japan. And, um, and this time we cooked up a second version of it. It all started with Aya Ogawa, the brilliant translator uh, from the Japanese, but also a performer and director who just participated in our Prelude Festival with her suicide forest. And, um, and Aya said, it's time we do something again. Plays are out there, uh, playwrights, not everything travels, um, and uh, they are very significant artists working, and we need to hear their voices. And what could I say? I said, of course, let's do it. And um, it's a very big uh, uh, undertaking. It took us a year and a half of work, of uh, uh, thinking how to do it. We had an advisory board in Japan to suggest plays, an advisory board here in New York to look through the plays. And we had to contact the writers, see if they could come. Um, we had to find great New York directors who really connect to the work. And um, it's a, a labor, I think, you know, of true uh, appreciation and of a global community we work in. A theater happens locally, but we all have to think of it globally. And perhaps a play in Japan, in Belgium, or in South Africa might have more to do with us than a play which is written next door. So um, we need to hear all the voices. And uh, if there's also one partner we have to thank, it is the Great uh, Japan Foundation. And uh, Koji is here from that. Uh, the Japan Foundation, again, has supported this highly unusual project even before we fully knew who the artists would be because we really selected them and they trusted us and we still get them in in the review time. But still, uh, it's highly unusual that they also said, please do go ahead. We know what you guys are doing. And uh, really, thank you. And it's a great, great thing you helped to make happen. I think when we join forces like this, we with Siegel and then you helping us bring the people over, good things happen. And um, so now it's the day, so I really can't believe it. I'm very excited, very nervous also, because I know these are significant artists. I know how much work went in from all the directors. And um, we also thank Yoko Shoya from the Japan uh, Society, who is here, who was also on the board, and many others who are here, John Gillespie, and uh, so many friends. So uh, it's unusual to start at 2 o'clock on a Monday afternoon in New York, but it's the only days we could get, the only times the playwright could come. All three of them came, one could not uh, join us, uh, Koro Tonino unfortunately couldn't get out of rehearsals. It was very close to fly in just for an afternoon, but then his manager said, you're out of your mind, <laughs> and uh, I forbid. So again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is a, a, a most significant program, and I hope it will lead to much more. We hope to maybe create a festival to show these plays and repertoire, again, as we did with the first one. And uh, so let's see. So. Um, Maybe of the playwrights who are here and, and uh, flew in from Japan, maybe put up your arms. So, uh, who, who, who were, yes, you're over there, and, uh, and who else um, is here? Yeah. And um, so, um, let's start. Maybe uh, we ask the director to give a, a short introduction also about the play, about the work. And, um, and uh, of course, we, uh, Sotoko, where is she? Over? There, so she's the writer. They came in on Sunday or Saturday. So um, it's a very big moment. It's the first time you're also in, the, in New York, in the US. As a child, you said you were here as a young kid. So it's a very big moment. So thank you for coming. And uh, again, if you have a cell phone, now is the time to take out and double check. I'll do the same. Should be on mute and out. And tonight, uh, after the third reading, uh, after the second reading, we're going to have a reception in the after the third, yeah, in the uh, archive bar around the corner. It's printed in the program, in case you want to come back again. Thank you all for coming, and uh, may the games begin, as we say. And here we go. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Christine Harunomi. Uh, I am a 
multi-hyphenate theater maker, and uh, I have the great pleasure of showing up today uh, as a director for Satoko Ichihara's play, Favonia's Fruitless Fable. Um, this is my first time meeting Satoko right here. Um, Satoko-san no koto hajimete ima koko de atte iru no de chotto kinchou shiteimasu. I feel nervous and excited. Uh, and uh, very uh, honored to have worked on this play as a staged reading. Uh, there are some incredible images, uh, incredible, wild, chaotic images throughout the play that uh, I worked with a projection designer, Matt Romine, to kind of expand uh, and show, share with you guys today. Uh, and starring in this staged reading will be uh, Chiwen Chang, uh, Max Cosmo Kramer, and Kyo Kamisawa on stage directions. So without further ado. Pavonia's Fruitless Fable, Kemiko Umowa, by Satoko Ichihara, English translation by Aya Ogawa. Winter, night. This is a back alley. It is dim and nothing can be seen clearly. There may be something hiding, or on the other hand, they may not. There is nothing definite about this place. During the day, children use this place to play house or war and transform the space into a house or battlefield. It is night and me walks the back alley alone. Me might be a Favonia or Favonia's fruitless fable, or he may not. The audience may see me as Favonia, or they may not. There's nothing definite about me. One. Invitation to Felicio. I was walking down the street at night to buy new pumps because there was a rumor that real leather pumps were sold in the back alley late at night. My pumps were fake leather. Fake leather is good in the rain and low maintenance. They're light and cheap, but I would buy fake leather pumps and wear them and throw them out, wear them, buy them, throw them away over and over, but it was time that I experienced the softness and quality of real leather. Suddenly, Miss Consciousness seemed to drift far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> a superior at her office, Hiroshi, enters. This is the office where Mi works. <laughs> Yo. Hello. Did you change your hair? No, I haven't. You haven't? No, does it look like I have? Not really. <laughs> Not really? You should get a better hairstyle. Uh-huh. You're cute up close. Oh, uh-huh. You carry up, <laughs> don't you? Oh, I don't carry up too much. Huh? Don't lie. Why are you lying? Oh, uh... What are you saying? Oh, I don't know. Ayu, or Amuro, or Aiko, right? Oh, yes. Ayu, or Amuro, or Aiko, yes. But so, most girls sing Ayu, or Amuro, or Aiko. You're right. Ayu, or Amuro, or Aiko. You want to go together? Oh, well. <laughs> uh, uh huh? You could? Huh? You know, I do all my house chores. Makes my mind really sharp. <laughs> I put water in the hot water maker and click the switch. While the water boils, I push the button on the washing machine. I use the TAC Neo on the one rinse cycle. I put rice and water in the rice cooker on the no wash speed setting and push the switch. By then, the water's boiling and I make tea. The tea is hot, so I slowly blow on it as I drink. 
That always makes me want to go to the bathroom, so I go with the newspaper. In the confined space of the bathroom, I can really focus. <laughs> All this information about the Japanese economy gets absorbed in my mind. When I read with such focus, time passes. Then the laundry sounds to chime, beep, beep, beep. <coughs> when it rings, I flush the toilet, hang the laundry out to dry. I hang my socks out first. Socks come in pairs, black with black, red with gray, so I hang each pair to a pin. That way, when I take the laundry in, they're already in pairs. Then I hang underwear. <laughs> and the heat tech and other clothes that aren't in pairs. By then, the rice will be ready. So I prepare the natto fermented soybeans. Beep, beep, beep. I love natto. <laughs> if I were asked what I'd like for my last supper, I might say I want to eat natto. I put okra in my natto. Okra is slimy, so it's good for your body. It keeps you regular. You should put okra in your natto. Also, yes, 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 yes. I eat a lot of okra too. Even before you told me to. Uh, my mother always told me to eat it, uh, but in a book I read recently, uh, it said if you eat too many slimy foods, uh, it'll actually make you constipated uh, and other adverse effects. Uh, too much is not good for your digestion. Uh, Same with mushrooms. Uh, People say mushrooms are good for your body, but if you eat too much, they have a component that makes your personality very arrogant. Yeah, 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 yeah. shut up. Let me finish. Don't try to interrupt me, because right now, I'm the one who's talking. All you gotta do is nod and chime in with the uh-huhs. If you're an ordinary person, you just relax. Right now, your job is to nod. You're on uh-huh duty. I just showed you how to do it. Nobody's talking about mushrooms. <laughs> anyway, I didn't know that about mushrooms. The importance of eating things in moderation is something everyone knows already. I'm not stupid. Are you implying that I eat too much mushrooms? Fuck off. I don't eat too much. I eat them in moderation. Why do I have to hear about mushrooms from a woman like you? What, are you an idiot? I can't enjoy such ordinary conversation. Everything you try to talk about, I can predict from your first word. I already know everything. From your second word, I ready my response based on what I foresee your point being, and I'm basically always correct. Textbooks were like that for me. In middle school, I only studied for a month and got into the best high school in my hometown. Whenever I read the first sentence in a textbook, I already knew what the rest of it said. But college admissions were a different story. Elite universities had different standards for language. I barely studied language because language was Japanese, and I've been speaking Japanese since I was born. I didn't think I had to study it. I could understand the language standard for my fallback schools, but the really elite schools had much higher standards. I was surprised by that difference. But in the end, I had to study, so that was that. In the end, who cares about university? I can read the paper in the bathroom in the morning. You're cute up close. Real leather, real leather, real leather. Me falls down after a while, then comes to. There she is, in the back alley. Real leather gets better with age. It conforms to the shape of my feet and becomes a perfect fit. Not only that, but small necks heal themselves naturally like living skin. It's a miracle. It's as if they're an extension of my body. Take off the fake leather and wear real leather. To become a new me, then I'll... The urge to find real leather pumps when we get stressed out is the way of women in this world. Two, the other me. Tonight, I will be meeting my other self. The fact that we each have another self that exists in the world is something that only some people know. Fighting one's other self at times results in murder. That is also a known fact. It is also said that the surviving self must eat the flesh of the dead self. They say that makes the surviving self strongest and that her flesh is incomparably delicious. But all of this is taboo, so the media never reports on it. They're different from doppelgangers. Their faces don't look alike. People's faces are changed by their way of life. People with twisted personalities have twisted faces. People aren't born ugly, they become ugly. But is it really that bad to have a twisted personality? Sometimes I wish people thought I had a bad personality. 
I'm a straightforward, good person, so I have a straightforward face, but sometimes I wonder why my face is so neat when I look at it in the mirror at night. So boring. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. Apparently one's other self is born when it splits off at some point around puberty. It's a self with other potential, a lost self, a self that has lived another life that you may have lived. That's the kind of life the other me is living, they say. I can be me because my other self exists. Without her, people wouldn't be able to tolerate me, and the same goes for my other me. Because of my existence, my other self is able to tolerate her own existence. We make each other's existence possible, so they say. However, everything I've told you up till now is all a hypothesis. These things are not certain, and since the topic is taboo world, worldwide, research has not advanced in any country. The other me, me too, answers blissfully. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen real leather pumps being sold around here? Real leather pumps? Yes, I came to buy real leather pumps. They sell pumps one alley over, but they're fake leather and terribly made. They'll make your feet bleed. Your shoes will be full of blood. My friend who's a ballerina wore those pumps and now she can't dance. Poor thing. Oh. <laughs> That's horrible. These days, there seem to be more and more women looking for real leather pumps. I live nearby and I'm frequently asked, what's the story? There are rumors among <laughs> women, haven't you heard? What, no, huh? So that's why. But why is everyone looking for real leather pumps? Everyone longs for them, especially women. They're, they're soft and quality. Mm, I'm a woman and I don't understand at all. Wait, you don't wear shoes? I'm already wearing shoes. No, you're not. I'm wearing real leather pumps. What are you talking <laughs> about? You're barefoot. That, that's dangerous. You'll bloody your feet. Yes, I will, but they will heal and grow stronger and stronger. <laughs> all of us humans are born wearing real leather pumps. <laughs> Why would you wear real leather pumps over your real leather pumps? <laughs> Why would you bloody your feet wearing man-made pumps? If your feet are going to get bloodied anyway, let them get bloody wearing your own real leather pumps. Take care of your real leather pumps. Me? Me? Oh. <laughs> Me? You're a bit rugged. But I feel jealous. You're beautiful. Really? Thank you. Who cares about that? <laughs> Let's not murder each other. <laughs> I'm stronger than you in every respect. I'm the one who has not lived feebly. I have lived listening to only my own voice. Your arms are so thin. In the sixth grade, my armpit hair was already thick. I'd shave and shave, but they grew back. Thicker. I couldn't participate in swimming class. I plucked out the hair, but that made me bleed. I begged my mother to take me to a permanent hair removal place, didn't I? <laughs> you went, but I did it. That is where we split apart, and I was born. <laughs> if I may be blunt, I'm very popular with men. I don't know why. My makeup is haphazard and I cut my own hair. I'm not particular about my clothes. Once I asked a man I was with, why are you with me? He said, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I said, then after some thought, he said, you kind of smell good. Apparently I smell good. Hair locks in smell. Isn't the smell of sweat a natural perfume? Pheromones? My body hair retains more pheromones than women who shave. Are you popular with men? I'm pretty popular. I'm sure you're wearing man-made charm. That's nothing. It's like showing men the word woman and attracting them to you. Look a woman. All I have to do is make eye contact and meow, and they meow back. That's it. <laughs> Why do you want to be popular? Are you lonely? Are you afraid to be alone? Loneliness that brings people together is still loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> Life is much more fun than that. I, you... That's right, me. It's me. <laughs> I was drinking by myself at a bar. I was thinking about something. 
It's my nightly habit to nurse a glass of whiskey. Some might think it's pretentious, but this is my nature. I was saying I like to drink whiskey every night to a teller at the Mizuho Bank, and the young girl said, that's so cool. It isn't cool. I'm not being pretentious. Haruki isn't being pretentious. He eats pistachio and croissant because that's his nature. That's Haruki. And this is me, I told the girl. She was shocked. You know Haruki Murakami? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has their own nature. I am all natural. Wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> yes! So, the other day, I went into a bar I've never been to. There was a woman like me, drinking alone. She ordered several scotch whiskeys. So, I asked her, do you like scotch? She said, yes, I do. But there are so many kinds of scotch with so many different flavors. Oh yes, fruity, sweet, oily. We really hit it off and talked about different types of whiskey. I met her several times at that bar after that. One night we decided to grab a bite because we were hungry. We left the bar and walked. There was a sign for a cabaret club. It was a collage of a lot of Photoshop girls. She looked at it and said, And I had a strange feeling. <laughs> yes, it was just a strange feeling. <laughs> then we went to, I think, a barbecue grill place. We ordered some meat, and since I like garlic, I ordered three orders of foil-wrapped garlic. She was surprised. She said, your mouth will smell. It's fine. You're quite a snob. My body craves garlic, so I must accommodate. Otherwise, poor me. Yeah, so I ate garlic, and she ate meat. Sometimes I ate meat, and she ate garlic. That night, we missed the last train. She let me stay in her apartment. I used her shower. And when I came out, the room was dark. She was lying down on the mattress next to the window. There was no other place for me, so I lay down with my back towards her. Then, she slid her hand in between my thighs. Me too, slice her hand in between me thighs. After a while, she came on top of me. Her full breasts pressed against mine. They bounced against each other, and then she reached down and squeezed my breast. Me too takes Mi's hand and makes her scoop her breasts from below and covers them. It's <sighs> quite a night. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So why are you telling me all of this? I don't know. I'm just talking. I'm just telling you about something that happened. Huh? What am I supposed to get from that? I don't know. <laughs> It's not for me to decide, that's your choice. You're free to feel however you feel. In fact, you can receive that freedom or not. You're free. You're free to buy man-made real leather pumps, or you're free to wear your own real leather pumps. It may be fun to live like that, that's my choice, but I will live wearing my own real leather pumps since I'm going to be bloody anyway. I, you. That's right, me, it's me. You want to get a drink? Stare in a bar. Oh, how I wish I had huge breasts like they have in those erotic manga, man. Mm. <laughs> yes, that might be nice. But big-breasted women are obsessed with their boobs, and they're usually ugly. They wear short shorts and tight tees, and they trap their purse straps between their boobs. And stupid men get caught by them. That's why they're obsessed with boobs and men. One day, their boobs will sag. I guess that's just how it is. Yeah, it's all right. It's still a privilege. <laughs> Big boobs are great, I guess. I wish I were popular. I thought you said you were popular. Oh, I am pretty popular. What do you do? As you can see, I'm just a regular office worker. Oh, how I envy you. Huh? Anyone can do it. What, office work? Yeah. I envy you. Wait! Is that your uniform? Yeah. office worker, just making copies and shredding paper all day, spend the whole day without a thought. I can't believe you can really live like that. I'd love to spend the day like that. I would love to stop thinking. I envy you. And my boobs would be huge. My boobs would sway as I walk and stupid men would make fun of me. Hey, Holstein, who's only married is being cute. Go make some copies. I'll listen to their talk, yeah, yeah, I marry one of them, a mindless office worker. How wonderful. How wonderful, a Holstein, how wonderful. I want to be one, just once I want to be called a Holstein. 
Me Too approaches me. The air is tense. There might be a murderous bottle when Me now has a huge chest. Take people all over the world, drink the liquid that comes out of your body. Mooing, you pervert. <laughs> they call cows that produce lots of milk super cows. <laughs> That's so erotic and nasty. <laughs> nasty Ms. Holstein. <laughs> dancing as if like a marionette. She's being manipulated by some invisible force. I am being danced by someone. Someone is making me dance. Me allows herself to dance fully. But it's fun. In fact, I will dance. Yo. Sperrier suddenly enters. Moo. Hey, you want to go karaoke? Moo. Have you been out all night? Moo, moo. You a whole sign? Moo, moo, moo. Me embraces Sperrier, pushing her breasts into him. Moo. Sperrier shoves me away. <laughs> me falls to the ground, face down, pathetically. Sperrier slaps me's buttlock, as if to say, stand up. Me stands up on all fours like a cow and begins to crawl clumsily. Sperrier approaches me, loosening his belt. Me and Sperrier disappear. <laughs> Three, a meaningless fight. Me enters as if she has been hurled onto the ground, face down in a pathetic state. I was walking down a street at night to buy new pumps. There was a rumor that real leather pumps were sold in a back alley late at night. My pumps were fake leather. These days, the world is full of fake leather pumps. Why is that? Every shoe store sells fake leather pumps. These days, all the women who walk the streets are bleeding from their heels. They question these circumstances but can't do anything. They say, oh, well, whatever. But somewhere, they wanted to experience the softness and quality of real leather. Suddenly, Miss Consciousness seems to drift far, far away. Sperrier enters. <laughs> I got drunk with my office superior, Hiroshi. After we did karaoke all night, we made out, I gave him a blow job, and then we started to go steady. <laughs> the way Hiroshi speaks, his appearance and his face, I didn't like any part of him. I hated all of him. 
I knew, well, I should drink in moderation, but I always ended up saying well, whatever and drinking too much. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I haven't said anything. Oh. Oh. Hey, you know, socks come in pairs, black with black, red with gray, and so on. So clip them in pairs when you hang them to dry. That way it's easier when you take them in the laundry. You ignore the pairs and hang them haphazardly so the person who folds the laundry, in other words, me, I could go through a lot of trouble. If you took more responsibility and took in the laundry yourself, I could let it go. I do have that much lenience, but you don't. You lie around and you eat boogers or boogers <laughs> like sweet natto. I feel disgusted just looking at you. You're a woman, so you're used to stockings that connect both your feet. You don't know what it feels like for me, for men whose socks are separated. <laughs> You just stuff your face with sweet natto. I have worn socks, you know. When it's cold. Uh. And inside I wear gelato pique socks. Uh. The fuzzy kind? Uh. The thick rim uh, socks? Uh, 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 shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't interrupt me. Who cares whether you've worn socks before? That's not what I'm talking about right now. I was trying to send a message about being more considerate and using socks as an example, but you didn't get that at all. You just said words about socks, about wearing thick socks in winter. What are you, a, a fool? Give me back the time I wasted talking about this. That's what I have to say to you. <laughs> Hiroshi, what you say uh -huh. is hard to understand. Uh -huh. Is it my fault? Uh -huh. Am I stupid? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. shut up. You and your talk. You're trying to tell me to be more sympathetic towards you. Listen to yourself. I'm putting in so much work to converse with a fool like you, and you're trying to turn it around in your foolish way. Before you tell other people what to do, do something about your own idiocy. That's what I have to say to you. You are horrible. Uh -huh. You call me a fool, uh -huh. but fools actually possess wisdom, you know. Don't make fun of fools. What the hell are you talking about? I give up! Are you fucking crazy? I did call you a fool, but I wasn't referring to the archetype of the fool. <laughs> it was a convenient word, but you're all hung up on that word. Just like with the socks, you get hung up on the weirdest details. You get hung up on my calling you a fool. You defend the fool in literature. Obviously, I know that the fool actually had wisdom. I wasn't making fun of the fool. In fact, I wasn't even talking about the fool. I was just using the term in a generic sense. When you said I was horrible, you were really just upset that I called you a fool. You must have realized I was saying you and not the fool were stupid, but you were distracted by the fool and wasted time defending it. Are you kidding? Loser. <laughs> by the way, let me add that the fool may have possessed wisdom when he used his wits, but his daily life was full of holes, and that gap created his charm. He's a charmer, that archetype. So calling the fool foolish is not making fun of him. It's coming from a place of love and familiarity. Does that mean you find me charming too? Is it coming from a place of love and familiarity? Shut up, are you kidding? You're not charming at all. Is this, are you crazy part two? I was talking about the fool. You on the other hand are an idiot anytime of any day, loser. You're horrible. Uh-huh. You're too horrible. Uh -huh. You hit me 
out of malice. How could you, Hiroshi? You're insane. It's horrifying. Is this Are You Crazy Part 3? <laughs> <laughs> You're a hopeless loser. I could just say that I saw you as a cockroach, too. I was a cockroach. I you live like a cockroach to me. You didn't see me as a cockroach, Hiroshi. No way. Would you slap a cockroach with your bare hand? No! If I were to do things your way, I could say that I, too, hold such violent emotion that, yes, I would slap cockroaches with my head. You're horrible. You thought I was a cockroach? I'm not a cockroach. You mistook your loved one for a cockroach. Hiroshi, you're insane. That's horrifying. Sperrier suddenly starts doing a slapping dance. <laughs> You know, I didn't lose. Let me just say this. You said I was condescending, but I have solid grounds to brag right here. I have a giant cock, as you know. <laughs> In other words, my giant cock is the grounds. I have a giant cock. I have a giant cock. I have a giant cock. My grounds for bragging lie in my giant cock. When I failed my entrance exams, that's what I chanted. <laughs> Women who have giant tits have them where everyone can see. They use their giant tits when they're in trouble to overcome crisis. All they have to do is push them together. It's not fair. I wish I could use my giant cock to overcome crisis, but my giant cock is down here. It's hard to make it stand out. My ex-girlfriend, who was beautiful and had huge tits, got married and had a baby, and she sent me pics of her kid. Are you kidding? The kid's, over, the kid's not cute at all, shitty brat. What the fuck? You fucking crazy? She used to be heads over heels for me. Every time she sends me pics, I chant, I have a giant cock. I have a giant cock. <laughs> On the way to McDonald's, there's a shitty boutique. The shitty smelling old ladies in the neighborhood go there for owl prints, leopard prints, dog prints, all shit-colored, vomit-colored clothes. All tunics and other shapeless old lady clothes laid out in this tiny store. It's disgusting. There are old ladies inside the boutique with heavy makeup caked on their faces like no masks with putrid breath, eating lipstick, selling weird clothes to their putrid friends, sewing the town with their putrid breath. Who the fuck do they think they are? And even then, I chant, I have a giant cock. I have a giant cock. And as I chant, my giant cock climbs up my body. to overcome it, like women do. I'm invincible now. I've decided to wear only skin-tight tops from now on. Real leather, real leather, real leather, real leather, real leather. Real leather gets better with age, conforms to the shape of my feet, and becomes a perfect fit. Not only that, but small nicks heal themselves naturally like living skin. It's a miracle. It's as, if, it's as if they're an extension of my body. Take off the fake leather and wear real leather to become a new me, and then I'll... He falls down and comes to, seizing the back alley. When I get stressed out, the urge to find real leather pumps. That's the way of the women in this world. Or crossword of Hazel man appears. He's holding the head of a female doll. The doll's mouth is a big gaping hole. The man is thrusting his giant cock in and out of the doll's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this right here. When there's this rock solid fit, my confidence of the zero percent begins to recover. Because of the my giant cock, I never tried that hard at anything. I failed at many things and have had my share of struggles. Mm -hmm. At times like that, I fit this here, rock solid, and my self-confidence comes back. That's how I've lived up till now. So there are benefits and disadvantages to having a giant cock. I take in the end, they come balance each other out. 
I met her a month ago at Wine Mobile. When I was drunk, I dropped my cell phone. I reported it to the police, but after a month, it still hadn't been found. So I went to Wine Mobile to look into other options. Um, I got drunk and dropped my phone. Yes, that happens. <laughs> what should I do? Let's switch you over to a new device and make sure your lost phone can't be used. So that's what happened. I had been using a flip phone, so I thought I'd switch to a smartphone. How do I use lying? And one thing led to another, and that's how she arrived here at my talk. <laughs> Felicia was the crossroad of dreams. In my case, I do without kissing or any other foreplay and put it in her mouth straight away. No penetration or pillow talk afterwards either. They're just Felicia by itself. That is why it means so much. You might think me a savage beast to do this with my giant cock, but I am just human. I live with my mind. I am proud of my humanity. I am so human, I'm headstrong, rock solid. Going right in rock solid doesn't feel good to me either. Shoving a rock solid thing into something else is just animal. I'm rock solid now, but I usually start out soft and get rock solid inside the mouth. That's why rock solid means so much. If I go straight out of rock solid, eek. She, see, she's surprised. She's scared off. She might even call the cops. So I have to assess her. Can I go for it or not? In the end, I just go for it. I have a giant cock. I have a giant cock. I, I chant. And when I get to make my move rock solid, it's like, yes, she may hesitate, but ultimately she put me in her mouth and I cheer for her. Good job, you're doing great! <laughs> She's encouraged by my cheering and she gets into it, and so do I. Thank you, thank you, you're amazing. You're a major leaguer. Oh, sometimes we hit a lull in the middle and she starts getting rational. What am I doing? Oh, look at my split ends. Maybe I should try silicone free shampoo. Hey, in a hurry, I cheer her on harder. Good job! It's not scary! Stay focused! Keep going! Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh! Like that. So, you see, there are many thoughts that cross my mind. That is how fully she was the crossword of dreams. Recently, a disembodied spirit has been coming to me to give blowjobs. I don't have to plan a time and a place. I can get a blowjob anytime I want. I don't even use my new smartphone. Who needs it? Your own mind is the best PC. Man can do anything as long as he has his mind. I am so human, I'm headstrong. Rock solid! <laughs> huh? Meow. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cat? Oh, a cat? Meow. <laughs> Cats do live in these back alleys. Achoo! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm getting a cold. Yeah. I bet holding that cat would be warm like a hot water bottle. I want to pet the cat. Achoo! Yeah? All right. <laughs> here, kitty, kitty, come here. Here, kitty, kitty, meow, meow, kitty, kitty. Kitty won't come out. I'm sorry. If I had more money, I'd buy some fancy feast and draw it out. <laughs> All because of this. I'm sorry. I wish you could warm up with that cat. Meow. Oh, the cat is crying so close, but I can't reach it. Happiness is so close, but I'm powerless to make it mine. <laughs> Dear God, <laughs> I cannot reach the cat. How did I become such a man? If I am reborn, I study hard and become a higher in the man. Then I think I touch a cat. <laughs> it's all right. Meow, meow, kitty, please come out. Meow, please come out. Do begs the cat to come please. out. Please. Ma also sitting together in a hurry. Please. Ma and dog keep begging. Please. The sight of them is horrifying. Please. 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 Me, unable please. to bear it any longer, comes out please. of the shadow. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was pretending to be a cat. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Mom violently grabs me Oh, wait. It wasn't a cat? <laughs> the moon at the back alley market. I was walking down a street at night to buy new pumps. There was rumor that real other pumps were sold in the back alley late at night. Finally, tonight, I will get my hands on real leather pumps. 
At the end of this alley, there will be a concert, and there, apparently, they will be selling real leather pumps. Cheap. At long last, I will experience the joy of getting real leather pumps. I am there, gathered with many other women. What a strange sight to see so many women filling the alley. Everyone is wearing fake leather pumps. Of course, I am too, but tonight will be the last. I found out about tonight's concert on my smartphone. Mi takes out her smartphone from her pocket and pulls out an image of Mao Meizi. This is the famous Chinese singer Mao Meizi. He's like the Elton John of China. <coughs> Tonight, he is going to sing his song, The Sun and the Cobbler on Main Street. It's his response to The Moon and the Back Alley Merchant. The Moon and the Back Alley Merchant is a well-known song, but for those of you who don't know it, it was broadcast as part of a children's program called Let's Play with Chun Li. The song is in Chinese, so I couldn't fully understand, but the accompanying animation showed a back alley with soup dumplings and chai buns and shrimp dumplings floating around. And as a child, I thought the song was about selling dim sum in a back alley. When I read the actual lyrics on the website, I found out there was a disparity between the lyrics and the animation. The back alley merchant sells real leather pumps, pumps in rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple, all lined up. What a beautiful sight. But only God knows those are fake leather pumps. Nobody notices how their heels bleed and weep. What do you think? <laughs> As you can see, this song is about pumps, not dim sum. Some Chinese-speaking people made a fuss about it. Why is the animation about dim sum? Horror, tremors, yes. And women who heard the moon in the back alley merchant began to go to the back alleys to buy real leather pumps. We've been brainwashed. Horror, tremors, yes. I myself was completely brainwashed. I can't believe myself. I can't believe this world of horror tremors, yes. And apparently the brainwashing of women using songs like this is spreading all over the world. Horror tremors, yes. But why brainwash women? There was a big conspiracy. Mao Meizi's manager and <laughs> This is a Japanese person imitating a Chinese person. <laughs> The imitation is not of an actual Chinese person, but a caricature of a Chinese person as presented in a Japanese media. <laughs> no. The gathering, it is packed with women. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for gathering. I am Mao Meiji's manager. Nice to meet you. You all come here. Very clever. Only chosen person can come here. Those who listen to Mao Meiji's The Sun and the Cobbler on the Main Street. The sunlight shine down on you and warm up your body and deprogram your brainwashing from the moon and the back alley magic. Everyone, your real life begins tomorrow. Yay! Woohoo! Sun! Sun! But one thing, I'm sorry, Mao Meiji cannot come tonight. Upset stomach. What? That's not acceptable. Hey, what are we going to do if you can't deprogram us? Calm down, everyone. But it's all right. In fact, I brought DVD. It has same effect. It will deprogram that moon and the moon back alley magic. What? Really? Oh, thank God. Oh, good. Yeah, what a relief. <laughs> yes. But before that, we sell real leather pumps. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> my associates smuggle these from an Italian shoemaking school. <laughs> Masterpiece made by 2% elite craftsmen. So wonderful. So wonderful. These are authentic. Fits like your own skin. Your heels, no bleed, no way. Every night, polish them with nutritional skin cream. You know, you not let go of these shoes all your life. Nutritional skin cream is 20,000 yen per bottle. But today, I offer a special set. What? Really? This is a super special set sale. You put cream on your face every night, right? Yes, I do. This cream has everything. Coenzyme, collagen, jojoba oil, placenta, everything <laughs> in there. It's best for human skin too. It makes skin very soft. Soft and supple. No wrinkles. 
Scratch his heel right away. So soft, like a woman. Soft. Really? I want it. How much is it? That's a real question. Cheap. One million yen. Aya, <laughs> uh, what? Is it expensive? <laughs> this real leather? Oh, I, I can't buy that. One million yen, right? How long you forced to dance? Don't you want to walk in a real leather pumps down Main Street in sunlight? I, I want to, of course we want to. Did you see website? Why real leather pumps disappear from Japan? Why they all fake leather? Why you all brainwashed? You forgot everything. You there, answer. Oh, <coughs> me? Um, all right. Um, first, it was for profit. Right. Cheap fake leather pumps don't last long. They scuff easily and they're stiff. They hurt your feet and make them bleed. They're ruined quickly, so you have to buy new ones right away. And the shops only sell cheap fake leather pumps, so we're forced to buy cheap fake leather pumps again. Since they're cheap and fake, we treat them poorly and they get ruined. It's a downward spiral. Yes, and? So as we live like this, we start thinking we want real leather. We walk the back alleys in search of real leather. I mean, we're brainwashed into walking the alleys, so we do, and we wear out our cheap fake leather pumps, and they get ruined even faster, and we have to buy another pair. Yes. You spend three, five million yen on fake leather pumps in your lifetime. But you think a million is cheap. Follow money to buy. Stop buying pumps. You save money. Your feet won't bleed. They fit best. Only good things. And? Yes, it's to dominate women. Because of these pumps, we never have any money, so we flirt with men to make them treat us to meals. In the alleys, there are perverts. Many women are victims of sex crimes. Above all, women lose their confidence when they wear fake leather. They spend their lives hoping they will have real leather someday, so wearing fake leather now feels incomplete, and they lose confidence. They search and search, but cannot find real leather. And myself without real leather continues. When humans live in scarcity, we tend to want to believe that the person we meet in the alley is our other self. And this can lead to murder. Um, right now, I only have 30,000 yen on me. Is, is it okay if I pay the rest on a payment plan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the money. Me takes off her pumps and puts on the new pair that the manager had prepared. She savors the fit and the sensation of the shoes. It is great. After all, I can finally wear these real leather pumps. I am complete. That's right. That is because women are by far the superior organism over men. Women are smart and have communication skills. We do lose our rationale sometimes, but we have an intuitive understanding of what goes beyond reason. We have elastic minds. Not just our minds, but flexible bodies too. We have a charm that enchants men. The only thing that men can beat women at is brute force. That is why men have used brainwashing to take away money from women and strip our confidence. Men are terrified of women and women hate men. Men can sense this unconsciously, which deepens their fear and makes them want to control women even more, and this makes women hate men even more. Men played at murder as children. We women played house out of love and inventiveness. It is the end of the era of men. Men, acknowledge your defeat gracefully, then women will stop. Thank you. Okay, play DVD and done.
any more pussy is. And I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave birth to a boy and he had a really big cock. And I gave my baby milk from my huge breasts. I raised him and he called me Holstein. Hey Holstein, give me milk, he'd say. I'd moo and give him milk. He was adorable. Since he was born, my breasts have produced milk the whole time. I have too much milk. Goodness. If I don't let it out, my breasts get hard and painful. Do you want some fresh squeezed milk? I can make it for and milk. Me wraps the store on me to snip and drums hot to this. Me exists, dragging me to his body. Pumps. There was a rumor that real leather pumps were sold in a back alley late at night. My pumps were fake leather. I grilled me's flesh and ate it like steak. Little by little, every day. It was delicious. I wonder if this makes me my strongest possible self. I'm lying. I didn't eat her. <laughs> Since I heard about hot dog buns for me, I can't help but eat them. I have this tendency to eat things that I've seen or heard about other people eating. Why is that? Why am I like this? <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd tie a string around some bread and hang it into the gutter to catch crawfish. There were tons of crawfish in the gutter, and I would catch tons of them. I love bread. I wanted to eat the bread and felt conflicted about using it to catch stinky crawfish, Seemed like a good deal for the crawfish. Such soft, sweet, white food shouldn't exist in the gutter. The crawfish would go into a frenzy, and I would catch countless of them on my line. I used the bread out of spite. I filled my bucket full of crawfish, and in the bucket, the crawfish began to eat each other. I wondered where my bread went. I took the crawfish home and kept them in the scorching sun in the yard. The water in the bucket boiled, the crawfish were cooked. They turned a vibrant red and curled up. If I had peeled those freshly boiled crawfish and eaten them, would I have gotten my bread back? <laughs> the crawfish offered me nothing in return. They just took my bread and died selfishly. And I had somehow killed someone. I wish it were a human tendency. I wish I had been brainwashed. I wish it had been a gift from God, I wanted an explanation for why I had been made to dance like this. Why am I like this? Nevertheless, what is fueling my innards right now is a hot dog bun. That is the truth. It is also true that dancing generates heat in one's body. So what makes my body warm is not a song, nor the sun, but myself. That's the truth. by someone. Someone is dancing to me.
also down that have a talk about that a little bit, about what we saw, the actors want to stay, and also congratulations and a big applause. For your First of all, Aya graciously not only helped to produce the festival, translated things, helped us select the playwright. She also said, I can translate, so uh, you are a participant, of course, that, but also will help a little bit. So what are her reactions? What, what, what um, yeah, Satoko, tell us a little bit. <laughs> it's really, really fun. <laughs> I'm in, in a little bit of shock right now. I can't quite articulate myself. <laughs> try, try. <laughs> the video productions were amazing. The actors were amazing. And I just realized that I'd written a comedy. <laughs> was it a tragedy? Did you think it was a tragedy? <laughs> Actually, the, the audience reaction in Japan is much more serious, so I thought I had written something you know, quite serious. <laughs> Um, t tell us a little bit, what was the idea for that work? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I had actually uh, had a part-time job working in a shoe store, um, and I, that's kind of where it started, and uh, Japan, as you might know, is a very uh, male-centered society, so all the stress that had been accumulated in, inside me from dealing with kind of the, the daily uh, attitudes of, of men kind of came out in this way. Was it your first play that you wrote? This is about my 10th play. About the 10th play. So tell us a little bit where do you come from, from the writing that you novelist or writer, did you study playwriting? What's, how did you get to the theater? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
その日々抱えてた違和感とかを作品にしてみようと思って、えっと、大学の友達を集めて卒業研究として作品を作ってみました。Um, and you know, I realized that as an actor, I, I had a lot of、uh, dissatisfaction or things that I felt were, didn't sit well with me. So, that last year in college, I gathered some of my friends together and I, I tried writing and writing a play. And that, that particular piece、um, was received unexpectedly well,、um, and I felt like it was worth continuing, so, so I did.、Um, when you write, what are your influences? Who did you look up to? What were your inspirations? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
So I, it, it's not like I'm creating this play to make this kind of political statement or to have this like feminist agenda out in the world or anything like that. Be 自分がこう自然にまあ自分が生活をしていてその時に感じることをその感じたことをまあ何かの何何派とかに当てはめるのではなくてえっと。より無邪気に出したいっていつも思っています。I'm I'm really just trying to express without kind of falling into any school of thought or any political movement、um, the things that I feel and experience in my day to day life. Yeah, just standing the Me Too character、um, in a sense how closely connected is. But let's talk a bit about your technique of writing. Do you write at home on a computer? How many drafts do you do? Uh, uh, do you write all day? How, what do you, how do you create your work? まあ、あの長い、えー、とモノローグをバーっとその時の気分で書いてみてそれをこう、えー、俳優に少しずつ配って彼らとあのその文章を読んでの彼らの意見とかを聞きながらどんどんそれを膨らましていってっていう作業を最近はしています。So, lately, my process has been mostly first, I will just generate、um, a long monologue, and then I'll enter the rehearsal space、um, with my actors and,、um, and we'll read it together. And I will ask for their reactions and opinions, and then that will influence、um, how I continue and we'll develop it together that way. だからあのこの作品もその俳優との作業がすごく密にあって、えっと、彼らのエピソードもいくつか入っています。So this play too、um, went through a, a process like that of、um, working very closely with the actors and a lot of the stories that they contributed or their, they experienced made their way into the script as well. そうやってこうたくさんのえっ、ー、と素材を作ってどういうふうに組み合わせていくかっていうことを最終的にやっていきます。And then with a lot of different scenes and ingredients before me, I'll figure out how to piece everything together into a cohesive whole. Fantastic, such a brilliant dialogue, so tense, surprising, imaginative, and very serious and bloody, and but also so so funny. So all you can、uh, can have in a play. But let's talk about two actors. How did it feel? How did it feel to perform、um, that text? <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs>、uh, okay. Should be on.、It's, I think it's on.、Um, uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend that it wasn't scary, but it was very. What was scary about it? <laughs> A lot.、Um, I think there's something very precious about performing work that is translated、um, and wanting to honor a piece of text that I'm not able to read an original copy of. And the closest understanding I have is. The script that Aya translated,、um, but also after moving past the initial、um, reluctance, I wouldn't say reluctance, maybe like being timid to, to grab onto it, there's something so fun about just like playing with something that you don't really know what's going on with. <laughs> Again, to the actors,、um, what did you wrestle with? What was complicated and what was easy? <laughs>、um, I don't know, yeah, maybe tone sometimes. 
like the finding the the, the and the style a bit. Mm. The tones in the different modes. Mm. It's quite like complex. I would agree with Max. Things that were serious or at, ended up being more fun when we were playing with it, um, but also not being sure of like what is the right interpretation, which applies to any any play really. Christine, um, tell us a bit about the adaptation, the process, your ideas, your vision. Yeah. Um, well, first off, I really want to thank Kyo here, who uh, was uh, assistant directing and also serving as dramaturg. So it was really incredible to have Kyo's insight of the play. She had read both the Japanese and the English. Um, so as we were uh, grappling with trying to understand these cultural tones or uh, these characters that seem to be very uh, specifically nestled uh, in a cultural stereotype. Kyo was kind of there every step of the way helping us uh, decode that or understand that. So yeah, there was uh, an approach where we were very trying to be very sensitive to those things and also uh, leaving room to play, <laughs> play a lot. Um, I think when I, uh, I think when I, first read this play, um, again, I was really struck by the images and um, I was thinking how, what can I offer this play? Uh, and I imagined all the like, the cock moments uh, being puppeted or done physically. And um, for me, this experiment to really place that image in its most clear uh, version uh, via projection uh, was an exciting experiment for me. So maybe before we go uh, to audience questions, to <coughs> Chiven, the last question, as a dramaturg, did you feel you had to make adaptations for American audiences? Were there something you felt you had to media that that was not so really clear? And what was that? Yeah, um, I also had a reaction when I read the play. I thought it was very, very serious because there are a lot of um, situations where um, women are very oppressed and silenced by men. And that is something that I feel very, very close to because I was, I grew up in Japan. So, um, but like when we started play, um, play around, I realized there is a surreal absurdity in it. And I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, I really wanted to uh, make sure that um, there is like there is very very um, sad and pathetic and also desperate about this play. Um, and I also really contemplated on the meaning of like why we uh, present this Japanese play that happens in Japan in um, America and to the uh, American audience and. I was very, very interested in how we can make those messages clear. Yeah, I think it came uh, uh, clear very loud and, and uh, crystal clear and still light like a bird's foot, as someone said, what good poetry is about. The characters are dangerous, you know, they could hurt someone. You have a feeling, I think Mark Ravenhill, who once was here, about his play, uh, shopping and fucking, he said, my, my characters were dangerous. You know, they, 
most of the players, he says, they could kill the other ones. You know, what are people talking about? I feel this, these are strong characters, and they have something to say, even in that world, this imaginary world of the inside and the outside of the imagination, the truth, so not, and uh, that it was this commercial like, shopping and uh, the, what's love, what's a relationship, and the office work. I thought it was a fa fantastic uh, um, 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 condensation of thoughts, which is so complex, where we don't really, as you might say, it's not easy to, to, to put them into a sense of them logic, but I felt it's something very, um, very contemporary, and I, I don't know, I've been only once there, but it felt or twice, it's something, yeah, a Japanese player could see that um, coming from there, and maybe not from other places, but maybe we have some lights from the audiences, and for the audiences, <coughs> we have a time for a couple of questions, thanks, Alex. And, um, and uh, so um, any thoughts, or it can be a comment, doesn't have to be a question. And um, anybody has um, something, one, and, uh, and then again, anybody else? Yeah, so we start here. And maybe say very shortly who you are, and then, uh, but just one question or one observation. I am a grandmother with a half Japanese granddaughter, age 23. I'm very interested in this subject. I thought the performance, the play, everything was stellar from the translation to the incredible acting and to the writing. Yeah. Really, it's given me a whole new dimension on life. Thank you. Um, I thought it was wonderfully transgressive and very funny because of that. The most interesting comment for me, has been that she you, you discovered you wrote a comedy, which means that you made it a comedy. I mean, the direction and the actors took it in that direction, and I think it really works well here um, in, that in that form, in that style, in that genre. And it reminded me of two things, um, Karen Finley being transgressive and Jari. You know, it's, it's just, it, it was exaggerated in that way and, and so um, affecting, true, and pleasurable. So. Okay. Um, Hi. Hi, I'm Miyoko Shioya, artistic director at Japan Society. I, um, the question to Christine, um, I read that, or not the article, I read that it's play in Japanese that the Satoko-san sent me, and then I talked with Aya when she was working on the translation. And uh, as you know, we have been doing um, the similar English translated play reading, and then uh, whether or not we would take it, this play into our next project or not. And then that process, I was talking with Aya, and then um, I asked, Aya told me, did you see the video? And then I didn't see it. Then when I read the Japanese Japanese uh, play, it was, I wouldn't say it's a serious, but then I thought that it, it would be too shocking, probably. And um, um, so then she, Aya told me, well, you should see the video. It's, it's not that shocking thing. Or, or some, I don't know exactly the conversation I had. And then I saw her, production in Japan, in Japanese, and then I laughed a lot. I mean, probably I'm probably Americanized. So, <laughs> so I laughed at the scenes, and then, so my question to you is that, did you see the video before you, this put together, or you just read it, and then I come up with like uh, what the Satoko said as a way of comedy? Yeah, I, I just read it. Um, I knew that a production, a previous production existed, um, but I had not seen it, so um, yeah, this was an interpretation directly from the script. Uh, so I, I loved it, but um, I wanted to know uh, how does it feel if you didn't intend it to be a comedy that you saw, saw it as a comedy here? Like, あ、
扱われることは多いですし自分でもまあ自分もその陽気な人間っていうかまあ自分もあのそんなシリアスな人間じゃないので面白いことを書いてる意識はありますね。I mean, people did, even in Japan, there are some people who, who treated it as a comedy. And even though I wasn't necessarily、um, thinking about deliberately like, writing a comedy, I, I'm a lighthearted person and generally、um, am aware that I'm writing about some out there things. So、um, I feel, <laughs> feel good about it. Maybe one or two, yeah. Hi,、um, Satoko. That was、uh, really great to see it. Because、um, I, I, as you know, I saw the,、um, the production in Japan. And I felt that、um, the, what, in both places, what fascinated me the most was the idea of me, the idea of me and another me, and then the other me takes on. All these different identities. And、um, it, it came off differently here, but I sort of felt that that was the serious core. And with that, you could play. And in Japan, some people were laughing, but I think it was an uncomfortable laugh. But I think the comedy is an uncomfortable comedy. And that, that is what's so great about it. Uh, hi, I'm Julia. I'm a Chinese actor. So, my question is why is the song Chinese? I want to hear the story behind the Chinese song. ま、これはあの日本人がチャイ、あの中国人の真似をしているっていう前提があっての詩なんですけど、本当に中国人が出ているわけではないんですが、えっとま、中国人への。イメージ、日本人が持っているイメージってすごいメディアから作られていて、その
thank you for coming um, and close uh, to an end of that first reading. And I think it was a fantastic start. And all the other plays are really significant work also and inspiring. So I hope you will have time. I know you can see all after all this is New York, but um, it will be of interest. I would like to welcome Kenji Matsumoto from the Japan Foundation. As I said earlier, they are the great supporters. Kenji was here also 10 years ago when we did the first exchange. He has been a great supporter and friend of the Siegel Center and also um, supported this. He's also a great worker in the field of theater and international connections. And, uh, and so, um, Kenji, thank you for coming and uh, being here. And, uh, <laughs> this is great. So, um, last question uh, to you. Are those real leather shoes uh, you have on? <laughs> I forget. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. And I would say another big applause was for this really stellar. Thank you.